welcome to our first edition of Arts Altoona Live. We are so excited to be bringing this new broadcast to all of you. My name is Pam Edders. I'm a member of the Arts Altoona team, as well as the executive director of the Altoona Symphony Orchestra. And for all intents and purposes today, a muralist. And I am joined here with two very special and uh, famous local artists. John Rita and Joe Cervello, and we are going to talk to you a little bit about the mural culture here in downtown Altoona, um, about the history of it, and perhaps where we see it taking us on our journey with our South Altoona. So, I guess the first thing that we'll talk about, since our South Altoona's mission is to really revive the downtown area, is what brought both of you back to Altoona and to kind of start what was the very maybe first artistic revolution here. Let's start with Joe. All right, well, the, the French mural that uh, I did here was uh, for Jerry Wolf, but it was on the Wolf building. And I was not living in Alpena at the time, but he hired me when I came back and, and did it. I think it was around 1970. And I remember that the wall was crumbling, uh, and there were two painters kind of hold together with paint as I was doing it. So it lasted uh, fairly fairly well considered. Now is this the mural that's in uh, in the curtain mall area? Yes, it's uh, it, it depicts the uh, the meeting of the war governors in Altoona at the uh, what's that hotel? What was that hotel? Uh, the Logan House. The Logan House, Logan House. Yes. yes. Now one of my favorite things about this painting is that I feel like I could stare at it for a long time and continually find silhouettes of trains. Did you intentionally hide silhouettes in there or is that just part of the design aesthetic? I think there are, I think that's partly true and uh, not true. Sure. <laughs> I, I think, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't remember. Okay. That's fair enough. <laughs> Uh, do you know how many murals you have done downtown? I think uh, I think two, three. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the one and the one Green Avenue mm -hmm. and that one. Uh, these are, and the one at the Michler. Sure. Uh, so that's three. Three. Yes. So we have um, Joseph Rills and three murals. One of them is the one we were just mentioning, which is the Curtain Mall mural. Um, he said it's about the meeting of the war governors and. Logan Town Hotel, and um, there's actually a big parade at that time. Um, a couple of really neat things that you might be interested in looking up that are slightly off topic, but during that parade, uh, a women's auxiliary had done this really amazing human flag where they all dressed up in red, white, and blue, and they carried umbrellas, and um, the symphonies actually tried to recreate this sort of human flag concept before at the Day in the Arts. But it was quite a celebration and what a really neat thing to commemorate uh, in a mural. The, the other murals that he's mentioning, there's one in Green Avenue that um, shows a family and uh, community. Uh, part of what I like about that one is the sort of how you did the, the rays. It almost feels like there's rays of light kind of spraying across the mural. And uh, I, as a... Um, as a, uh, a younger mural artist, that was one of the murals that I fell in love with, the treatment that you gave to the wall. And um, there's a mural that I did in Milton, PA, that I used that sort of, um, that sort of colorful ray effect in the mural. So I mimicked a little bit of what you did on that one. Oh, good. Well, that's great. <laughs> and um, our most recent addition to the murals in downtown Altoona is a painting that Joe did of all the happenings at the Michelin Theater, which if I can throw a plug in for them, they're looking to continue renovations on and um, they're going to be rehauling their in entire inside with the seats. So if you've been to the Michler and you're um, looking to get a little bit of a comfortable seat when you're sitting there, you should check out the, the mission that they have going on right now. But the mural that's there um, shows the symphony's beloved Maestro Chung, dancers, uh, actors. It's really bright, very colorful, and it's a brilliant addition to so the downtown was, landscape. Uh, this was John Rita's idea, you know. Of course. And he's, the <laughs> that, he's the one that organized it. and. Uh, 
really organize the, uh, the, uh, the, the making of the, the panels that make up the action mural. I just had to do a little picture. Yeah, and but I do any, whatever John tells me. I, <laughs> I well, well it, it, was a, it was a really neat collaborative project because uh, actually I'd gone around with uh, people from the city years earlier and we tried to identify walls that might have been, you know, potential candidates for, for mural work. And that was one of the spaces that was. Well, the projects never really happened. So this wall was just there and it was just planned and we were working on the exterior restoration of the theater. And so we had this space and so I, I, I approached Joe, I said, this, this would be great. I said, uh, and I have a friend, Jack White, who has a studio who can enlarge these things as, long, as big as buildings. I said, you don't have to climb a scaffold anymore, Joe. I said, all you have to do is do a watercolor, which you do brilliantly. And I said, create this thing. And I had sort of just a thumbnail of an idea that I, that I had. And he took it and ran with it. And, and it was a great project. And we, we love the addition. Well, that's good to know, because that is not something that I had known that it was sort of a collaborative effort. And I know, John, that you've done a lot of work um, inside the Michelers. So what a great way to kind of pull them inside. And I mean, the inside is a mural itself. And I don't even mean just the actual frescoes, but even the columns and all of the work that goes into creating sort of the, um, the faux finishes and the effects. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about what's inside that people need to get in there and see. Well, that, that could be a whole story in itself, I <laughs> suppose, because it, it, the restoration there took place over, over a period of over a decade. And so there were just so, so, so many things. I mean, it's hard for people to imagine that that uh, whole interior was just painted white with uh, all of the ornament was just painted with gold paint. And most of the white paint was peeling like the side of a barn when we walked into it. It was very, very deteriorated. It was a long, 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 long process. But I, I would like to go back to what we were talking about and you were asking a first introduction to, to murals in, in, in Altoona. And mine came in high school when I did a, wrote a, a, a paper on Lauren Thompson Jr.'s mural, the WPA mural, in the Altoona Post Office. So that was my first introduction to mural art in the, in the city. And I was fascinated with, with those paintings, the, the building of Altoona's one at each end. And that kind of really got me going down the road of murals. Uh, and, uh, you me, know, excuse me, me too. <laughs> yeah, did you, really? Well, Absolutely. see, that's great. That you had that kind of, it was an inspiration to see the, the kind of work that was done there. And, uh, you know, it was just a big, and it was really interesting in that day, you know, they gave, I think, one or two percent of, of federal budgets went to public art, which was just a great thing at the time. That doesn't sound like a lot of money, but on projects, you know, that really funded a lot of art throughout the country, which we still have a lot of today. But at any rate, that was kind of an inspiration that when we got asked to do this mural uh, behind us uh, was kind of, um, you know, that was really kind of in the back of my mind, but it would actually have a place in the ultimate story of the thing when it, when it came to be. Uh, Jerry Himes came to us and uh, he had actually had a proposal for another artist and he wasn't, he didn't care for the proposal and he said, you know, what can you do? So he gave us a winner to, to, to come up with a proposal and he loved our proposal and so I, I teamed up with Alan Capriotti who could be here today. In fact, Alan, who is uh, such a, a celebrated artist, he's opening a show in New York City right now. He's on his <laughs> way there. Uh, so he's, he won an international competition. So this is the kind of talent that comes out of this, this, this town. And uh, well, at, at any rate, we teamed up because we teamed up doing other murals. We had done a mural in the hallway in Bishop Guilfoyle High School. We knew each other, we were friends. And I had my business, Albert Michaels Gallery. Alan became an employee for a good 10 years. And uh, when we got the commission, you know, Jerry was this great, this, talk about a visionary. And he was the guy that basically said, look, I trust you. I'm not going to stand there and, and, and hang over your shoulder and, you know, and, and change your vision. Do, do, the, do this thing. And so we did it, but it, it took a long time. We were there from uh, spring through fall for two consecutive years. We finished in, in, in 89, which is a long time ago now. As you know, Joe, these things, the time flies. But, um, and the, the second part of the mural, the, the left portion of the mural, hadn't been created yet. Jerry had suggested these little vignettes of, of, of historic points around Blair County, and I said, eh, eh. We, did, we sort of hem and hawed, we didn't know. He said, do what you want to do. Uh, so we decided we were going to have Pope funded ourselves. We were saying, we painted these life-size buildings, we painted this big perspective, and I said, let's sort of knock ourselves down, you know, a little bit. And I said, 
let's make this thing a postcard. So really, even though it's a gigantic mural, in the final image, it'll just be this little thing, you know? So we got this idea. We took one of the artists that was working. We had a whole team of artists, actually. We had a bunch of volunteers and, and other people that were in the arts that wanted to help. And we took one of them. We went down to the post office, and here we photographed his hand holding a blank postcard right, right in front of the Lauren Thompson mural that I was just talking about. And we decided that we were going to make the whole mural that we were inside the Altoona Post Office, and this whole mural is just a, a, a postcard. And so the mural's entitled, you know, Postcards from Altoona, Altoona Something to Write Home About. And uh, that really, and Jerry loved it, and we just really had a blast doing it. It was kind of neat painting a two-story hand, mm -hmm. because we painted it, truth be told, we painted it with sponges. We couldn't, and Alan and I are, are, are these, we're, the two of us are kind of like left-handed, right hand. So, you know, I'd put a dab here, and he'd put a dab there, <laughs> and the whole thing was so spontaneous that it was just really a blast. But uh, at the end, it really, it was, it was kind of, Jerry threw a big party. Uh, he, he had Oak Spring Winery make a uh, celebration wine that had the picture of the mural on it, and we had a dedication. They drove us down, we dressed in period costumes from Altoona Community Theater, and we wore, wore turn-of-the-century garb, and we, they brought us down in vintage vehicles, and, and the place was just uh, uh, packed. And it, it, was a, it was a lovely night, so it was a fitting. But I gotta tell you, you know, we're raining today, and this is kind of the, the, anybody here working knows, the artists working here realize that what a challenge it is to work outside between the heat of the summer, the wind blowing your drawings down the street, and the rain. It was a difficult challenge to get this thing accomplished. But anyway, that's, that's pretty much it. That, that, this is my essential mural in downtown Altoona, although the mural in the dome of the Michler uh, Alan and I recreated from black and white photographs is actually done by another artist at the turn of the century and we reproduced that mural uh, faithfully from those black and white photographs. So that's my other actual hands-on mural painting in Altoona. So um, if it may come full circle, um, I actually can say that I was inspired to become a muralist by the two of you. So um, as it becomes like generational, uh, when I started doing my artwork and I uh, worked for a short stint in the education program at SAMA and I walked into Joe's studio one day and I said hi my name is Pam and I want to paint a mural and I've seen your name all over town can you help me and one of the first things he said was I need to see your work before I will do anything <laughs> <laughs> so I went home and brought back a uh, catalog of work and he would flip through some pages and write a few notes and flip through some pages and write a few notes. He closed my book, stuck his sticky on it and slid it towards me and said, you need to talk to this person, this person, and this person. And I was like, I've made it. You know, I did it. <laughs> Joe has endorsed me. <laughs> and um, he kind of walked me step by step through the process of creating a mural. And I had a natural tendency to paint very large paintings. So um, I don't I I just kind of dove in and went for it. The most fortunate thing that could have ever happened to me was that in the summer that I was creating my mural, which is on the side of Shirley's shoes, uh, it's uh, it was in 2005. It was the same year that Alan Capriati was restoring the mural behind us. So I would constantly walk across the street if I had questions and. Just Alan, what do I do? What do I do here? What do I do here? And uh, what made my day, one hot day in the middle of the summer, was when Alan walked across the street and sat down on the curb and ate a sandwich and watched me paint. <laughs> and I was like, Alan Capriati's watching me, you know? And he came over and said, do you know how long it took us to paint that mural across the street? And I said, I have no idea, you know? And I. I had no idea what I was doing, if I'm being completely honest. You know, Pam, I remember also that you did that very fast. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, it took us two years, and this is taking you two months. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I said, well, Zero. I didn't know that it was supposed to take any amount of time. <laughs> and I felt a lot of pressure from the city mm -hmm. after having gone through the process to make it work. So um, I can tell you that you guys were my inspiration to start um, painting murals and um, I've been very lucky to do so in a couple of other communities across the state in their efforts to transform their communities and revitalize them. So if we can kind of go back to our original mission which is bringing back downtown Altoona and 
you can see it already happening. Uh, what, and maybe kind of wrap this up, what do you guys see um, the arts being as a catalyst to drive the future here in downtown? Is it more murals, bringing artists in? What are some of the ways you see us really bringing it back with arts at the core? Well, I, I personally think that everything that can be done is sort of being done. Mm -hmm. There are celebrations here, certainly the concerts at the Michler, the, the wonderful community theater, the fabulous orchestra, uh, and the new, new businesses that are now opening up. But uh, I see lots of festivals, and, and these, these things, uh, I think, are finally catching on. I think they are, they are working now. Uh, but John is the one with vision. I'd like to hear what John has to say. <laughs> well, I, I think, thank you, John. Uh, I, I think that there's, it's about diversity. And I think there are so many areas uh, that are in need of attention, but are getting attention now. And we can start with the buildings. There's a movement now to take over buildings, to put their historic character back. Uh, that's so much of what was lost, and by uh, doing all of those restorations, you kind of bring up the, the kind of quaintness of, of, and downtown charm that's, that's needed. Uh, certainly the arts figure in in terms of mural painting. Not so much that mural painting is at the heart of this now. The murals have been worked on. Uh, you know, we have that as a, as a core. Uh, I would like to see a program of urban sculpture developed. We talked about that when the Altoona Enhancement Committee was in existence. And in fact, the mayor has actually reinstated uh, the Altoona Enhancement Committee. Uh, I'm on the Altoona Enhancement Committee. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I think that would be a great thing. And I, uh, you know, it's one of the things I intend to bring up uh, as far as uh, adding these elements that are going to make it uh, more culturally rich. Of course, all of the venues we have, like the ongoing work, the Michler, and so on and so forth, to keep these kind of pieces together. And now, Arts Altoona, there is there is a lot of buzz about everything that's going on here in terms of, uh, of just these little pockets of culture that are now be, begun to take root. And I think it's it's very important to have those things established. Uh, you know, so every building, every little coffee shop, every little thing that gets done adds to this entire picture. Well, I want to say thank you to Joe Cervello and John Rita for joining us this morning on our very first edition of Arts Altoona Live. We hope you will continue to join us and invite your friends to our future broadcasts. Next week, we will have Maestra Teresa Chung on on Thursday at 10 a.m. And she will be able to talk a lot about the orchestra and what's going on for us this season. So we hope you will continue to tune in. And thank you so much for joining us today.